Hello, hello. It feels like forever since I've sat down and done a video like this with you. I'm actually kind of looking forward to it, even though I've been dreading it and putting it off all day. Now that I'm sitting here ready to do it, and I know that it's going to be like you and I talking together one on one. Now I'm feeling excited about it. What we're going to talk about today is 550 days carnivore and what my results have been. Lucy wants to get in on it a little bit, as you can see. But yes, 550 days. That's basically a year and a half. And a lot of things have changed for me, mostly good, but honestly, there are some things that are not perfect. And so I'm going to share with you all of that, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Surely I'm not the only one experiencing any bad thing, but I feel like I don't often hear anyone talk about the bad thing, except for maybe once they fixed it. And you're like, wait, 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 you had some bad thing going on? I'm only just now hearing about this now that I know all I have to do to avoid that is take iodine or something. But Anyway, I have definitely experienced some, some bad things. So I'm going to share that with you. It's very important to me to be transparent and open. And so that's what I'm going to do today. Now, here I am going on and on already. In case you're new here, I'm Jen. I am delighted to meet you. And I started a carnivore diet about a year and a half ago, 550 days ago, um, to treat mostly psoriasis, which I've had all my life. I had it very badly. We'll discuss it a little bit more here in a little bit. Um, and I've had so much improvement in that. And so that's kind of how I got down this road in the first place. I'm a doctor of physical therapy. I work in a hospital setting I have for almost 15 years. And now I also work in this sort of carnivore realm, helping people like you to achieve your goals. So let's talk first about some of the amazing benefits that I've gotten from this lifestyle. And actually let's back up even one step further and talk about what it is. What is the carnivore diet? For one and a half years, I've eaten nothing but meat, eggs, and sometimes a little bit of dairy. Now also sometimes during that year and a half, I included coffee. Sometimes I did, sometimes I didn't. So that gets a little bit trickier, but we'll say 90 plus percent of my diet has been meat and eggs. Now I've done lots of videos over this last year and a half to discuss how I save money doing this, when and why I've eliminated certain foods and added them back and all kinds of things like that. So if that interests you, scroll back a ways and you can find all kinds of information. Now we'll talk about some of the really great perks that I've had. One in particular is that I used to be such a binge eater. Lucy, she's cracking me up. Since I was about 15, I've been going maybe a few days to a week at a time, eating kind of normally, and then just binging, eating as many donuts, ice cream, pastries, cookies as I could fit, and then being physically sick. And that cycle has just repeated itself over and over, sometimes multiple days in a row. Sometimes I could get it together and go like a month, but it was really ruling my life from the age of 15 to like 38. Uh, and so that's something that has been completely eliminated by this change of diet. And I've done several videos on why I think that is. So you're welcome to go back and check some of those. I actually have a whole playlist titled binge eating. Um, so I've discussed that at length. And if that interests you, please do check it out. But just know that I would no longer consider myself a binge eater. And that is because of this diet. So if nothing else, it has transformed my life in the best way. And I'm so grateful for that. In fact, just my relationship with food in general is so much better. I no longer think of food as a reward or entertainment or anything like that. It's just, I should eat now. What do I have? You know, I have a steak or I'm going to make something fancy like carnivore pizza or whatever. So sometimes it is more fun than others. But in general, it's just I really am eating to live now instead of living to eat. Now, that doesn't completely take all the fun out of it. It's not that I don't enjoy it anymore because everything I eat is really tasty and I do enjoy it. But it's just not the highlight of my day anymore like it used to be in the past. Some other really great benefits I've had are in the pooping and farting department. I used to be so constipated, you guys, so badly that in 2019 or 2020, my doctor made me get a colonoscopy. I was in my mid-30s with no symptoms except for constipation. And my doctor made me get a colonoscopy just to make sure because I was pooping so infrequently. And when I would go, oh my gosh, it was painful. It was hard to pass. I was clogging up toilets everywhere I went. I have 
an hours long list of horror stories that I could tell you about toilets that I clogged up. Think like new boyfriends, parents house kind of situation, things like that. But I'll spare you the details. I'm no longer constipated. I now move my bowels every one to five days. Now you might say five days, that's still a long time. But it turns out that the frequency of bowel movement is actually not what constitutes constipation. It's how easy it is to go. If it's comfortable, easy to move, all of that, that's not constipation. I still go more frequently than I used to anyway. I also no longer suffer with gas. You know, maybe you're dating someone new and your stomach hurts so bad and you're just like, praying for them to leave the room or praying for the date to be over so you can pass some gas and get some relief. I mean, I remember those days and I no longer have that and it is such a relief. Okay, I think that's probably enough potty mouth talk. The other things that I've had that were good, I mean, these were not bad before, but my labs are still really good. My HDL is high, my triglycerides are low. My total cholesterol and the LDL are considered on the high side, but I think they actually were before I was on this diet. And also turns out as long as your HDL and triglycerides are good, that those others don't really matter. Um, I filmed videos about this. So again, go back through my videos and you can see a very detailed um, explanation of what I'm talking about here. My most recent labs did show that I had some liver damage that was from when I was on some very high dose psoriasis medications, which they were immunosuppressants. And that liver damage is beginning to reverse. It's not completely reversed, but it is better since I've gone on the diet. My vitamin D is still a little low, but it's a little bit better. My magnesium is a little low. I don't know that it's a whole lot Lot better since going carnivore so i am supplementing magnesium and vitamin d um, my thyroid labs look good everything looked good lab wise now speaking of my psoriasis medication this is probably tied at least for the most important change that i've had since going on the diet maybe the binge eating i would say is a tie because that is a literal miracle too but getting off my psoriasis medication was my ultimate goal actually clearing my skin was my ultimate goal it used to look so bad. I was covered head to toe. I was so uncomfortable. I was probably going through some depression. It was affecting my relationships. It was just really, really bad. Um, and it's so much better. We're going to discuss my skin, but I want to first talk about getting off my medication. So I was on immunosuppressants for a couple of years. And the really bad thing about that, well, it's basically poison, but you can't get pregnant when you're on it. And I actually want to have a baby. I know I'm pushing it here. I'm 39 now. I don't have a whole lot of time left, but I almost had resigned myself to just knowing, well, I'm probably not going to have a baby because I can't get pregnant on this and I can't go off of it because my skin will go back to how it was. And oh my gosh, I was just in a lot of turmoil about this. I was dating someone who wanted to have a baby. I was feeling very conflicted about not being able to do that. It just really took a toll on me. And then all that stress, I think, affected my health negatively too. But the point is that 11 months ago, seven months into the carnivore diet, I was able to wean off my medication and I've since gotten off all of my medications. So I was on that psoriasis drug and then I also had an IUD. I've had that removed. I no longer take any medication whatsoever. I'm completely medication free. Every time I go to the doctor, they're like, list your medications and I say none. And even for a 39 year old, they're like, what, really? No medications? No, no medications. I don't take any medications. And that is so wonderful. I feel like I can start a family now. Now I still have to find a husband. I'm working on it. But after that, there's no barrier now besides potentially my age keeping me from having a baby. So seriously, I, I just feel feels like a miracle to me. I'm so, so grateful that I was able to make this change and make that happen. Okay, so that was a pretty good summary of a lot of the really good stuff. Let's get into some of the stuff that's not quite so perfect. Okay, so my skin is one of them. Now it is so much better, 95% better. But I do have a couple of little spots. I'm going to take a little video for you because you can't really see it here. Let me I'm going to film this toward my mirror. You can't really see from there. So I'm going to do more of a close up video for you so you can see what I'm talking about. But I do have a couple of spots and um, it's way better than at its worst. It's also way better than when it used to be fairly stable. And then I went on medication and then it was completely clear till it was terrible, right? So it's better than it's ever been still a year after getting off my medication. But I have had a couple spots pop up and I just want to be really clear about that because I think that I've kind of made myself into the autoimmune skin 
poster child. And while I just have a couple little spots that honestly, maybe no one would even notice, I do notice. And if someone out there is struggling, like why isn't my skin 100% clear like Jen's? I just feel like I need to be upfront about this. Now it, it recently started popping up just a little bit and it's honestly, it seems like it's mostly related to when I drink coffee but sometimes I just I just drink it anyway it's I can't explain it you know sometimes I think I can get away with it and it starts with kind of a little bit of itching and then I'll notice a spot so I'm still trying to figure out exactly what to include and what not to include in my diet to keep keep my skin as consistently clear as possible but sometimes it's just a frustrating thing and I'll have a spot and I just, you know, have to just give myself a break too sometimes. The bottom line is though that even if my skin gets a little bit worse, I kind of don't think it will because it's stayed really stable ever since these couple spots have popped up. It stayed really stable. But even if it gets a little worse, I would not go on medication again right now, at least until I've either had a baby or decided I'm not going to. Um, if I ever were going to go on medications again, it would be because I'm no longer even entertaining the idea of having a baby. So I, I still feel like that's a win, but I am very disappointed to have to share that my skin is not 100%, it's 98%. The other thing that's a pretty big one that has not been perfect for me, and I think a lot of people struggle with this one, is my weight. So when I started the diet in the first place, I did lose about 10 pounds. And I felt like I felt like that was a really good body weight for me. I felt good in my clothing. Um, I felt like, you know, even though technically my weight was still higher than it should be for my height according to a BMI scale. I felt like it was pretty appropriate weight for me. Maybe I could have lost another 5 to 10 pounds, but I wouldn't have even wanted to lose more than that. Okay, so let me summarize to say I lost about 10 pounds in my first couple months being a carnivore. But then after about 6 months, I started to very slowly gain a few pounds, maybe 5 pounds. So then I was probably five pounds lower than where I started. I still felt really good about that. And at that point I was getting off my medications. My skin was clear. So I was like, who cares about the weight? That is not my top priority. I, I, even today I feel pretty good in my body, but fast forward another six months, I've kind of gained a little bit more weight. So I now weigh about five pounds more than when I even started. So I lost 10, then ultimately I've gained about 15. So now I'm feeling a little bit like, okay, there's got to be something I can do differently. And I've tried quite a few things. When I, when my skin was clear and I was off my medication, I started trying to focus more on weight loss. So I've tried adjusting my workouts. I've tried including a little bit of fasting. I've done high fat. I've done low fat. I've done calorie restricting. I've tracked ketones and and um glucose i mean i've just done so many things and usually anything i do for the first few days will result in a few pounds of weight loss and then i either can't stick with it or i don't probably i don't stick with it and then i end up gaining weight and what i'm looking for here is something that's much easier i don't have to think about it all the time you know part of the perks of the carnivore diet is that you don't have to be tracking and weighing and focusing, hyper-focusing on everything all the time. And so I'm still trying to figure that out. And then I hear people like Dr. Barry say, it should be easy. You shouldn't have to put a lot of thought into it. Like it just, your weight will naturally get to where it's supposed to be. And I just, I'm not finding that to be the case for myself. And so for those of you who also are not finding to be finding that to be the case, you are not alone, okay? I don't think it's because you're doing something wrong. I, I personally am not eating any more than I ever was before. So I don't know, but what I, what I do think I've experienced a lot of in the last two to four months is a lot of stress. Now it's stress that I've brought on to myself. I've actually discussed this in a video. I feel like I'm saying that a lot. It's a video called I'm struggling and it's all about how I started to recognize that I was feeling a lot of stress. And I think that has to do with my weight. I think that um, cortisol's been high. I'm really working on that. I'm working on prioritizing sleep and getting morning sun and getting activity and not trying to fast. And you know, we'll see what happens with my weight from that, but it's still a work in progress. Just realized my computer's been in the frame the whole time I have it here because I have a list of topics that I wanted to discuss. And so whatever, you'll just see my computer. But honestly, this skin and the weight were the two big things that I feel like haven't been perfect. Now my athletic performance has been mostly fine as far as lifting weights in the gym and that kind of thing. I don't feel like I have a lot of energy for like running or HIIT training, but I kind of never did. I don't think that that's necessarily new since going carnivore. I think that... <laughs> 
I've just always hated those things. But the thing that is new since going carnivore is when I go on hiking trips, which I do fairly uh, frequently, a few times a year, I have a really hard time adjusting to the elevation. It seems like my heart just, oh my gosh, my heart rate just gets so high, especially the first couple of days. I mean, I'm talking, it'll be 175 and I just started a hike two minutes ago and I'm barely walked. That wasn't really a thing for me before carnivore. So I don't know what that's about, but it's just a little bit harder for me to acclimate. So all that to say, I may be making some changes to try to help with the weight, the athletic performance, because I, I do want to make sure I have as much energy as I possibly can for some things that I want to start incorporating more like some running. And you know, when I'm hiking, I don't want to be like, Oh my gosh, I can't, I can't hike a mile because my heart rate's 175 and I'm just exhausted. So as I start making changes, I will definitely share those. I don't exactly know what they're even going to be yet, but I'm starting to feel like I don't just want to be a carnivore. It's changed my life in so many ways and I love it, but I'm not so dead set on being carnivore as much as I am on being healthy. So maybe I'll add a few plant foods back. We'll see. I'll probably experiment with it a little bit. And I, this has partly been spurred by the fact that I recently interviewed Sally Norton. And so I learned a lot from her about oxalate dumping, which I think could have something to do with my skin. And I've done some other interviews with carnivores that I respect who do include just a couple plant foods for various reasons that help them in ways that I think maybe it would help me as well. So, and also I'm taking a class through the Nutritional Therapy Association. I'm studying to be a nutrition therapy practitioner. That's not carnivore. I'm learning all about all kinds of different kinds of whole foods, really. And I'm not going to just go from being carnivore to eating all the plants as long as they're whole foods. I'm not going to do that. But I'm telling you, I'm learning in this course where if I can recognize a deficiency in myself and I'm not able to remedy that with meat, that I might be looking into doing it with plants. So I promise that I will share all of that with you. I am aware that it's going to upset some people and I'm probably going to lose some followers and you know, that's, that's fine. But I just, it, it means a lot more to me to just be honest and share the real truth because I hate the idea of someone coming to me for help. Now I'm doing some coaching and stuff. I don't want someone to come to me for help and I'm like, sorry, you're just not doing it right. You just have to carnivore better or, you know, or your skin should be a hundred percent clear or whatever. And then I'm living something different that just, I can't. I can't handle that. So that's why I'm just sort of planting this idea that I will be changing some things. It's been a year and a half carnivore. I've loved it. I really have no regrets. I don't think that my life could have changed this way without having done this. It's just that maybe I won't be such a purist going forward. All right, you guys, I sat down and intended for this to just go so smoothly and be really entertaining and just the perfect video. <laughs> I'm not sure I've achieved that, but I did share with you what I wanted to share. I hope this information was helpful and I hope it's entertaining too, but I just kind of want to make you aware that if you start noticing some changes going forward and what I'm eating, what I'm doing, what I'm promoting, da, 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 this is, it's not just because it's because of things I'm actually experiencing and maybe something that I find helps me will also help you. And so, you know, that would be the best of both worlds, really. As always with these long videos, thank you so much much for watching this whole thing. I really appreciate it. You are my people. I'd love for you to leave me a comment. If you'd like to ask any questions or anything that you want to discuss, please like and subscribe. And if you want to catch me on Instagram where we can connect every day.